Welcome back. It's still Plus Politics. The people of Edo State witnessed a battle between their governor, Godwin Obaseki, and former national chairman of the All Progressive Congress, Adam Sashomole. No one can particularly pinpoint when or why the conflict began. What we do know is that it cost Governor Obaseki to lose the governorship ticket of the APC, leading to his defection to the opposition party, People's Democratic Party, PDP where he obtained the party's ticket and Pastor Izeyamu taking Obaseki's place in the APC. It also played a role in Adam Soshomole losing his national party chairmanship seat. With the Edo state governorship election drawing nearer, we wonder who will come out victorious come September. Joining us to discuss these and some dynamics is Kazim Afegba. Someone is saying, I don't know how to describe you, whether as a former military spokesperson, I mean, the spokesperson of uh, Ibrahim Babangida, and also, you know, a spokesperson for Atiku campaign, former commissioner for information in Edo State. You wear all these caps. So currently, what is the name of your party, sir? People's Democratic Party, PDP. So what's Ward the five, problem? Ward 5, Okwela, Edo State. Interesting. Yes. Kazima Febwa, where exactly is the issue why you're not supporting the candidate of PDP in a dose state, even when the aspirant you supported, you know, stepped down for him? Well, I have said, I've said it so loud and clear that it is not about the uh, outcome of a particular exercise. It's about the processes leading to the outcome. We should derive courage, boldness, to interrogate processes, you know, uh, before decisions are taken or outcomes are realized. And I've said it very clearly that the way and manner the candidate of the PDP emerged defeats all democratic attributes in the sense that 24 hours to our primaries on the 19th of June, there was a postponement of that primaries from the national headquarters without any reason given. When all had massed you know, support, negotiations, constructive engagement, bargaining, and what have you, across the state, we've gone, we've finished congresses, to elect delegates, we'll finish all the processes of choosing party executives, we'll finish all the processes of going around. We're just looking forward to the primaries. And it For was the postponed. governorship. Governorship primaries. It was postponed. And postponed for a week. And um, before you see Jack Robinson, within that structured postponement, we had the governor of the state defect to the party and in the process everybody who was contesting for governorship stepped down and he marched. I would have loved to see a situation where he would have faced other aspirants to contest the primaries so that it would be all engaging. Like you saw in Ondo State where the deputy governor who defected to the PDP had to contest the primaries with others and jagged the SN. He and merged. I defeated him. That's the beauty of democracy. But you don't, you, someone can just come into your party within 24 hours and you surrender all your rights and privileges captured in these positions to him and his deputy. And you want me to go and mount the soap bus to be campaigning for such a person. I saw that as poison and I wouldn't really want to swallow that poison. So when I was confronted with the issue of my conscience and the party, I chose conscience because that is what defines your character. But your aspirant your didn't content. complain. He doesn't, have to, record. he doesn't have to complain. I remember it's equivalent to the vote I have. He has a vote, I have a vote. So it's not about someone complaining. Kazim, My rights and privileges are not captured in his aspirations. In his aspirations. Okay, yeah. uh, Kazim, I'll come back to a dose state. I, I'm just trying to make sure that uh, our viewers uh, uh, probably will have some issues with your person will mm -hmm. get to <laughs> clear issues. Yeah. Now, when you talk about principle, when you talk about integrity, some I don't know whether you have opportunity of getting some feedback, would say that who is talking about integrity? This was a man who was a commissioner under APC government. 
he moved to PDP, probably before the election or during the presidential election, and he vehemently worked against the party that his former boss was the national chairman. What's the relationship between what is the reason behind your defection and what exactly happened between you and the former chairman? Talking about well, very, former government. Very interesting question, but also people don't understand the dynamics. First and foremost, Adam Oshomole, I am not a creation of Adam Oshomole's politics. People should know that. I like to own an independent mind. Mm. And even as his commissioner in Edo, I stood openly against the aspiration of Godwin Obaseki in 2016. People forget. I supported engineer Chris Ogewanyi. People were wondering, how can you be a commissioner under Oshomole if you are supporting under Axpora? I did that openly, printed t-shirts, face cap, and what have you. Because I never believed in the Obaseki governorship aspiration or project as it were. That is one. Secondly, in APC, after 2016, I was writing criticisms about the way and manner the APC was carrying on, even though I was a member. I run a column with New Telegraph newspaper back page every Tuesday. And each time I write or grant interview, they were finding it uncomfortable. But I believe that individuals should be able to interrogate and criticize political parties they belong if they find out that certain things are not being done correctly. And the manifesto of the APC that we used to campaign in 2015 for Buhari presidency was such that if they have been able to implement all the items captured, one number one item is what you just discussed, restructuring. If they were able to, uh, to uh, uh, um, execute or translate all this manifesto into practice for Nigerians, who we'll have less tension and some of the issues we are battling with today. So out of the 21 items captured in APC manifesto, I saw that they were only doing two, school, feed, school feeding program and one other item. And I said, no, this was not what we, what we agreed. Know, agreed on. Now, I worked as, an, uh, as a member of the media committee of the APC Governors Forum. And each time we sit down to interrogate, to look at issues and what have you, you don't, the end product doesn't seem to come to the public glare. And at some point when the push came so strongly, Erufai became the chairman of the restructuring committee. And by the time they produced a document with all of us, uh, hmm. with all our input, it was kept in abeyance. So, so for that me, led you for me, to I leave felt the party. That, I felt that rather than stay inside and criticizing, and each time I criticize, they would think because I'm a former commissioner to Oshomole, and because of that, I'm, uh, Oshomole is the one sending me. I didn't want to bear that tag. I'm, I'm beyond that. I'm not, I'm not a, a student of Oshomole's politics. So I decided to call, quit with APC, and I joined the PDP. And I said, I want a platform where I can interrogate issues. I can. Why you? Why is it okay to listen to you that you are not a creation of a Shomole? Why did you choose to work with him? It doesn't you matter. believe in his it's, philosophy? It's my, no, it's my state. If you are being called upon to serve your state, to contribute to the process of friendly services to the people, you gladly do it. Even if it's a counselor, they call you to come and okay. you have to participate. It's so let's quickly come to the me. contemporary because of the election. Yeah, now. Yeah. now that you decided to stay with PDP. Is that not a different uh, rhetoric looking at PDP not following what you stand for? You want to stay in PDP, is it to work, is it to uh, work against the candidate or you want to, uh, you, you, probably there's a plan that I'm not aware of. There is no plan anywhere. The fact is that uh, I'm a member of the PDP, no doubt about that. And you're going to course, stick to that? Yes, of course, they've made the effort to suspend me, call my ward chairman, speak to all of them and all of that. It's not about suspension. You can't suspend my votes. If you suspend me, you expel me, you can't expel my thumb. So my thumb is there for me to choose who I want. It's about the state. And in this, in this case, there are two critical individuals. One who is the current governor, whose leadership and governance process I have witnessed in the last four years, and have seen that he has not been able to fulfill the yearnings and aspirations of my own community, Okwela, as it were. And so it will be difficult for me to mount the soap bus and be clapping for him when the roads go into my community are in Palo State. If he had completed them, because Shomole did them halfway, if he had completed them or allowed the contrast to run through, I will appreciate it by now, our roles will have been okay. If the schools have been fixed, or teachers have been employed in those, in those schools, 
I will be happy. One school has completely been closed down because of lack of teachers. Out of the five secondary schools in my community, we have four now. Out of those four, one has four teachers, the other three teachers, three teachers, three teachers. The secondary schools. We now hire NYC person, core members to just assist in this thing. At times we hire uh, teachers and based on communal basis. So for me, if Okwela is producing so much money because of the presence of limestone deposit, we have Boa cement, Dangote cement is almost completed. And government is taking so much of revenue from internally generated revenue from our place. I see no reason why we should not be in the prime of place, our reckoning of the government. Uh, so I, I had opportunity to, to interface with Governor Basaki on a couple of times. He came to my community four times. We were even in the same cabinet, right? Yes, we were in the same cabinet, of course. So we, he came to my community four times. He promised the people four times, and four times he failed us. So it would be difficult for me to go around and be clapping for him or campaigning for him. At any rate, the PDP earlier this year criticized his government that is called F9 and gave him F9 in all the critical sectors of the Edo mm. economy. The health sector, the infrastructural sector, job creation, um, uh, flooding and erosion control, and several other failed promises. So what has changed three, four months later that you now made Obasaki to be the poster boy? And each time I probe into the into the rhetoric that brought about all of this, what I get is that, oh, he's a, he's a sitting governor, he's got state funds to dispense with. So that's but the But if, 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 if he gives you his word, I, I'm not speaking for him, if he gives you his word, that this is going to be a priority. Probably he had time to explain no, no, to no, you no, 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 the resources are not enough. Because please, my question is, where, where is angle. your vote going? No, Even I'm when I'm not... I don't I'm have a, the power. I'm to... an insider in Edo politics. I'm not an outsider. I know what goes on. I know how much resources we have gotten. Between January this year alone, up till April, the state got, has gotten 49 billion. Not to talk about May, June. But some communities know. can clap hands for him that so, he did well for them. <laughs> some communities can do that. I'm telling you, you will know why you are in politics. I'm not looking for a job from anybody. You will know why you are in politics you know why the other person is in politics. It's all about service, but I want to see my community, it's a limestone community, that, that carries that image of a limestone community where resources are gotten, taken from, and where attention is given to all the critical infrastructure that make up that community. That said, I will be happy to see this thing. And I have, having tested Obasaki for four years, and with my party PDP condemning him and scoring him F9, they cannot make so, a, a 360 and degree turn. back to my question again. Yes. Are you just going to be indifferent or you my to vote, vote for? is My vote and those of my supporters, I'm going to go home to campaign vigorously for the APC candidate. You know why? I've tested Obasaki for four years. But the same APC have also scored him F9 in the past. They've mm -hmm. described him, they've given him all kinds of names. No. I'm talking about Izeyamu. It, 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 so it, why would you want to vote for him? See. I just told you I'm an insider in... I'm also an insider, maybe not in as a, much as an insider in, like in, you. In Edo politics. <laughs> and what I'm saying is that, having tasted a man for four years, I've formed my dissonance. And different, dissonance is a feeling you get where you don't get satisfaction from a product. So the Obasaki product to me is poisoned. It's a poison product. It does not suit my aims and aspirations. What about and the Izzy Amu? People. Izzy Amu has not been tested as a governor, so let me... He has been tested in leadership too. Of course, he was secretary, he was uh, the, the chief of staff, but it's not as, as a chief executive whose signature card is No, as an say. insider, you will know him. You so will know I his know capacity. him very well. I know he has capacity. He, he cuts across the state. So he this is not a state. protest vote. By the time. It's by not the, a protest vote. Is that this, what you're saying? It, it can't be a protest vote. It's a vote born out of considered and studied appreciation of the dynamics that form the intricate logic of a politics. And to that extent, knowing all the centripetal and the centrifugal forces that factorizes the, you know, the politics of the state, I have a heart. Kazim, I, 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 I have a duty to, to yeah. try and remind you of some of the things. As at the last time probably you spoke publicly, you had not taken a position. You were either here nor here, but you no, were so categorical that no. you're not voting for Basaki. Yes. Is it that Izeyamu looked at this opportunity and reached out to you? No. Or they didn't you, see, it was just your choice? They didn't see me. I was angry with the process that threw up Basaki. I was really, really angry. I mean, you can't just 
come, I joined PDP in 2018. I left the APC, I joined PDP. It was a ruling party. APC is a ruling party. I will have opportunity to so many opportunities and what have you. I will have access to many persons who are in government. You want to look for position and all of that. I didn't look at all of that. I left on my own volition because I'm not driven by stomach infrastructure. Like, all like what some people are writing about me, uh, they say I'm not inconsequential yet, they will take a full page to be writing about me. An inconsequential element will not attract that such kind of recognition from writers and paid hirelings. For, for, for once, I want people to always see the state as the denominator of your political engagement, and the individuals as a vehicle that will translate whatever you have in terms of aspirations, in terms of uh, proposals or projects, to, 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 to reach out to the people. Obaseki does not have a blueprint. And I've seen him four years what he has done. He's been fair promises. And I give a typical example, reason why the PDP scored him F9. He promised 1,200 houses. He has delivered 50. He promised one health center per wards of the, look of the entire state, 192 wards. He has just built 20 in four years. If we follow the pace, in another four years, we'll do 40. That, that, that's a far cry. Flooding and erosion in Edo State is alarming. He, he suspended the Bini City Stormwater Master Plan. OK, Kazim, you know, so I, I was just told that I have less than 90 seconds. Uh, you will do me a favor by telling us the reality. You know, some would say that uh, how calculated is your decision looking at um, the current reality in Edo State. Uh, what we see or what we hear is that um, for, for some reasons, uh, Shaibu seems to be doing well in a donut, which we, which you come from, and uh, 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 Oshomole's territory is being threatened. We're talking about the Bini people. Uh, that might not go in the way of Izeyamu. And we are also talking about the Asian people, which seems to be traditionally a PDP state. Uh, a I mean, PDP, PDP region. <laughs> you have 60 seconds. And you have used 30 seconds to laugh. It doesn't, doesn't matter. I laugh at all this kind of theoretical analysis of the state. We are in the Edo state. We know what the issues are and we know who the persons are. The critical, the, the critical mass of the Edo electorate in 2016 was Izeyamu and Oshomole. Obaseki was not in the equation. Oshomole birthed him. And because he campaigned for him, he literally spoke for him. But what but about those people who have seen now, Oshomole now, as being high-handed and they want to go no, the no, opposite no, no. way? There's nothing like high-handedness. When you have a governor who fights against a do interest, how could you expect such a governor to enjoy the support of the Edo electorate. You fought against Captain Osa interest and Edo son who is a philanthropist, a wealth creator. You pull out uh, Dr. Pius Sudubu, you refuse to pay him severe allowance as a deputy governor. He, he got uh, appointed into NDDC as chairman. You fought about it, you petitioned, they remove him. Chief Hector, a palace chief who was also commissioner for Edo in, uh, in, the, in, the, in, in, in NDCC, you fought, you pull him out. By the time you are pulling out Edo interest, now Shumule is gone as national chairman. What is the place of Edo in national politics? Let's leave that question for people to answer. Thank so you that's, so much. The issue. So Thank you so much. Everybody who is telling you otherwise is only playing. We'll, we'll it's find just, out in it's September. It's just been economical with the truth. We'll find out in September. Thank you once again, Kazima Fegba, former it's commissioner, former, I mean, still a spokesman to Ibrahim yeah, Babangida, yeah, well, so. and also uh, a strong member of PDP. Let's wait whether I will still remain a member of PDP in the days to come. Either they choose to suspend you or they choose to allow you to stay. It doesn't Since matter. There's a move. I don't give a damn <laughs> about that. What is permanent is my conscience. Good. Thank you for staying with us. We will take our plus report now. And when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Please don't go anywhere. The Good Governance and Transparency Coalition has described the recent allegations of corruption against the NEDC, Northeast Development Commission, as baseless and mischievous. The group while addressing newsmen in Abuja said the allegations were leveled by a faceless group and investigations to unearth the truth has proven that their claims are false and baseless. The convener of the group, Gabriel Agibi, says that findings within the commission reveal that they are currently no cases of corruption within the NEDC. The allegations of fraudulent activities leveled against the management of the Northeast Development Commission by a group called the Coalition of New Nigeria Transparency and Anti-Corruption, CNNTAC, mandated us to carry out a detailed investigation into the allegations to put 
issues in proper, proper perspective. From our findings, the CNN TSC is not a member of our coalition, and there's no record of such a group in our database. In the past one year of its operations, there has been entrenchment of transparency and accountability. We are consequently alarmed that the CNN TSC could make such spurious allegations without recourse to the implications of their phantom actions, which by all intent and purposes are poor tests and lacking any form of credibility, as there are no such infractions in the operations of the NEDC. As a matter of fact, the operational manual of the NEDC is such that it's tailored to ensure accountability at all times. And as such, we wonder how such infractions would have been affected with the multiple layer of checks in place. Here is my take on the issue of restructuring. The rhetoric and insistence of pro-restructuring advocates must be commended at least from 2014 after the national conference. What may be controversial is the tone of the threat it has taken. What may have led to this tone is also debatable. Is it born out of genuine call to develop every region or is it born out of an attempt to micromanage and control smaller territories by some oligarch? oligarchical forces. Whatever is the intention, both divides agree that there must be some form of the construction of the current systemic problem. Whatever will make the government unattractive, both at the center and the federating unit, is welcome. Whatever will make the country not to be mono-dependent on oil is welcome. What will make us have more schools and more hospitals to be built is a welcome idea. And that's my take for tonight. I am Kyle Delade. See you for another bumper edition on Monday when we return on Plus Politics. Bye for now.